So you're in Genesis chapter one, it says he created two great lights, the greater light, the sun, to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night, he made the stars also, and God set them in the firmament. I don't know how many times he can say it, but he said it at least three times so far, in the firmament of the heaven to divide, to give light on upon the earth. So reasons for the sun and the moon to give light upon the earth. And in verse 18 it says, to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. Turn to Mark chapter 13. I'm gonna prove to, prove to you without a shadow of a doubt that the moon is a light and not a terrestrial plane that you can land on. Because mind you, when it was land, God called it earth. He would have said a light and an earth. Because when it was land, he called it earth. But he's calling it a light. Look in Mark chapter 13 and verse 24. And it says, in those days, after the tribulation, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light the moon's own light. If the moon was giving it the light from the sun, it would be the sun's light. It's her own light. This is a literal picture from NASA that they released to the public. And in their fake CGI imaging right here, you can see that they're taking this picture from behind their false moon and their false world. And the sun is shining on the, on the earth, but it forgot to shine on the moon. It, it forgot right here. There's no sun here. There's no light here. This was released to the public. There would be light here if the sun was behind it. There should be, this should be illuminated. It's darkened because it's fake. And the moon's a light. Revelation 21, 23 reads, And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. So why would it mention the moon as a light if it wasn't giving it off its own light? You wouldn't need that, that extra wording there. It doesn't make sense. First Corinthians 15 verse 41, it says, there is one glory of the sun. It's talking about the light shining from it. It's talking about the light given off of it. And that's why it talks, describes the glory of God. It's talking about light. There's one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon. Moon, own light, own light, another glory. Not the same glory. And then it says also, and another glory of the stars. So the stars have also have their own light. For one star differ from another star in glory. So different brightnesses, different lights. And mind you, if the moon is a light and not a, a plane, everything you've ever been told is a lie. Everything you've ever been told is a lie because the moon can't have gravity if it's, a, if it's a, a, a lesser light. And actually the moon and the sun are the same size. Why would they look the same exact size and be exactly the perfect distance away from each other to look the exact same size? If the, if the sun is billions of times bigger than the earth or, mil, or however much, many times bigger, and it would have to be the perfect distance away and the moon would have to be the perfect distance away for them to be the same exact size. It doesn't make sense. They're the same size. One's just a light for night and the other's a light for day. They're in the firmament. Turn to Ezekiel chapter 32, verse seven. Verse seven says, when I shall put thee out, I will cover the heaven and make the stars thereof dark, and I will cover the sun with a cloud, and the moon shall not give her light. All the bright lights of heaven will I make dark over thee, and I shall set darkness upon the land. So the reason he says it will be dark is because the moon will not give her light. The moon is a light. Jeremiah, I'm just going to beat this right into the ground. Jeremiah 31, verse 35. I actually had to cut out about 40 more verses of this 
just because it was too repetitive, but I really need to show you this. Jeremiah 31 verse 35 reads, Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances Keep in mind, ordinances is like a setting of something. You know, you set ordinances. So the ordinance of the sun and the moon would be the rotation thereof. And it says the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night. So the moon is a light and the stars are a light for night. Which divideth the sea when the waves thereof roar, the Lord of hosts is his name. Isaiah chapter 13 and verse 10 it reads, For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. The moon's light, her light. The moon gives off its own light, and it is not a plane you can land on. That's why the moon landing was a fake. And that's why the guy looked like a nut job when he was trying to explain how he landed on the moon because you can't land on a light. It's just not possible. It doesn't make sense. We were never able to see stars from the lunar surface or on the daylight side of the moon by eye without looking through the optics. Uh, I don't recall during the period of time that we were photographing the sonar curl or what, uh, what stars we could see. I don't remember seeing any. I don't remember seeing any. I don't remember saying anything. Whilst. Whilst in space. From Mark space, Cameron. This is from Mark Cameron. Whilst in space, have you ever looked away from Earth into the black void? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, because yeah, you time. can see. Yeah. Because yeah. you can see the stars. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and uh, pretty much all the time you can see yeah. the stars. Yeah. We were never able to see stars from the lunar surface or on the daylight side of the moon. The sky is uh, a deep black uh, when viewed from the moon as it is when viewed from uh, cislunar space, the space between the Earth and the moon. And we could not see stars. It's not Which a black cool void. Thing. I mean, it's black, but there's all kinds of little polka dots. There's all the, there's all the stars there. And the cool thing is about it, you can see it during the day. And when you're, when you're in space and you're looking into deep space and you're on the sun side of the orbit, uh, the sunlight washes out all the starlight so you can't see any stars just like here on Earth. There's all the, there's all the stars there and the cool thing is about it, you can see it during the day. Yeah, you can and there's more than stars. You can see planets, you can right. see moons. You, you see the, ga the gas uh, Magellan clouds of yeah, the Milky Way galaxy. Yeah, yeah, you see the uh, the sunlight washes out all the starlight, so you can't see any stars, just like here on Earth. Pretty much all the time, you can see yeah. the stars. Then when you look out into deep space away from the sun, it's the darkest black you can imagine. Just the inherent beauty of it, the velvet, bottomless bucket of the universe. In like, just hanging there in a vast sea of darkness, and the most frightening darkness that you could ever imagine. Pretty much all the time, you can see yeah. the stars. Yeah. From in Mark space. Cameron. This is from Mark Cameron. Whilst in space, have you ever looked away from Earth into the black void? And the most frightening darkness that you could ever imagine. Pretty much all the time you can see yeah. the stars. Yeah. Sky, of course, was uh, was black, but it uh, had sort of a velvet sheen to it. The biggest visual surprise was just how black the sky was. <laughs> you have a brilliant sun, brighter than any sun you normally would see even here in New Mexico. Uh, you have uh, these, uh, these extraordinarily high mountains. We were in a valley deeper than the Grand Canyon. Yeah, but then you have this black sky, a sky blacker than black, as the old Vit Viticon expression used to be. There's all, the, there's all the stars there, and the cool thing is about you can see it during the day. I've often tried to explain the difference between darkness, when you turn out the lights and it's dark in here, or blackness. Blackness is the endlessness of it all. It's hard to comprehend. Uh, pretty much all the time you can see yeah. the stars. I'd go to the moon in a nanosecond. Uh, the problem is we don't have the technology to do that anymore. We used to, but we uh, 
destroyed that technology and it's a painful process to build it back again. But going to Mars should be uh, one of the next series of steps that humans do. The first step should be going back to the moon for a number of technical uh, reasons and exploration reasons and then after that Mars, maybe a uh, high orbit in uh, Venus atmosphere, maybe going to Europa. There's all kinds of uh, targets to go to places of interest in our solar system. The, the only limit to human future is in our own imaginations. The, the only limit to human future is in our own imagination.